Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. The court will note that this matter is before the court on a pro confesso hearing, as well as the plaintiff's notice of entry of judgment in UCSO in this matter. I guess, Mr. Murphy, I'll ask you, are you opposing or disputing anything at this point? Um, not disputing anything other than I just want it on record that I signed this agreement as I was told Kim had a terminal diagnosis. So I signed some of those provisions based on that time okay. frame. So like as far as custody and stuff. Okay. Well, you signed it. That's the important thing. And do you recall my office and uh, coming to my office and signing a complaint for divorce? Yes. And in that complaint, you stated you'd been a resident of the state of Michigan for at least 180 days and a resident of Calhoun County for at least 10 days. Was that true when you signed the complaint? Yes. And in the complaint, you stated there'd been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the objects of matrimony had been destroyed and there remained no reasonable likelihood the marriage could be preserved. Was that true when you signed the complaint? Yes. Does that remain true today? Yes. Is it correct that you and your husband have minor children together? Yes. Are you currently pregnant at this time? No. And have you had an opportunity to review the judgment of divorce? Yes. And in fact, is that your signature on the judgment of divorce and the uniform child support order? Yes. If for some reason the judge were to not sign the judgment of divorce today, do you believe there's any chance at reconciliation with your husband? No. May it please the court. Court is satisfied that the testimony does establish the statutory basis. There has been a showing there's been a breakdown of the marital relationship. The file is in order. Uh, we do have front of the court approval. Uh, the defendant has appeared, stated he does not contest or dispute anything, and that he signed the uh, proposed pleadings in this matter. As a result, uh, the court will enter those. At this point, uh, you are divorced. Best of luck to both of you. I hope everything works out. The court will end this proceeding at 8.35 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. Shepard is here after failing to appear on August 17th of 2022, and that was an adjourned show cause before your honor. This is the third bench warrant with bond currently set at $1,711. He reports no new employment. Last payment made on this case voluntarily was through income withholding in December of 2019. Friend of the court is requesting the next hearing be set for fe February 14th at 8 a.m. before this court. Okay, thank you. Mr. Shepard, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. Purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your tenants at the next hearing on February 14, 2024 at 8 o'clock a.m. You will get notice of that in writing. Are you able to post a bond, sir? Uh, no, I have not, no, I'm not at this moment. Okay. I've actually just posted a, a posted payment just uh, last week, too. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is the court but, does note that... Uh, in this matter, you, you have not, well, you, you apparently made a payment just last week, but up up until then, you hadn't made a payment in, sure. uh, in uh, three years, four years, actually. So the court's taking that into consideration. Uh, it is your third bench warrant as well. What I'm going to do is I am going to reduce your bond in hopes you could be released. I'm going to set your bond in the amount of $500. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay, thank you. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. Mr. Craig is here after failing to appear for a show cause on February 14, 2022 before the referee. This is the ninth bench warrant with bond currently set at $2,472. He reports no new employment with last payment being from unemployment in October of 2020. Friend of the court is requesting the next hearing be set for February 14th at 845 before your honor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Craig, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. Purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your tenants at the next hearing on February 14, 2024 at 845 a.m. Are you able to post a bond, sir? Nope. Okay. Uh, uh, how do I sign off on the kids? I've been, I talked to Alyssa Peltier, which is now Alyssa Marie Valles because she's married. And we were talking about signing off the kids. If I sign off the kids, that means I'm not eligible to pay any child support and all uh, marriages will be just. That's what we talked about recently. Now, you may talk about that, but it may not be. The court may not do it. There, there's limited basis to be able to sign off. You just can't sign off because you want to or you don't want to pay child support. Uh, there's again a limited basis if there's a step parent adoption or uh, yeah 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 yes yeah, yeah. yeah, another case. Is... there's another case 
involving a uh, an abuse neglect case, then your rights could be terminated. But you just can't do it voluntarily just because you feel like it. Well, no, she's married. I just said she was married. So like, is, it is doesn't that... matter if she's married. She I'm saying married he's, well, he's married. willing to sign. Uh, he's willing to sign on the paperwork. Yeah, okay. Well, they'll have to take that and they'll have to fight, do that proceeding. Then that's not before us today. Uh, okay. Okay. The, well, we. I, I was just letting you know we were talking about it uh, recently, and she's supposed to be following through with the paperwork, so her new husband can adopt him. Okay. Well, if so. it does, we'll do, we'll address that at that point. Uh, right now, we uh, note that you haven't paid in over three years in this particular matter. You've got nine prior bench warrants. What the court's going to do? I'm going to reduce your bond in hopes that you could be released. You set your bond in the amount of one thousand dollars. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? Nope. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're excused. Have a good day. Yep, you too. All right. I think that is all we had for today. Good morning to all of you. Uh, court will note uh, the appearance of Mr. Sullivan. I thought Mr. Umloff was on this case. Oh, yes, he is. Hold on. I missed that. Good morning, Mr. Umloff. Good morning. Uh, just called the case. Uh, matter is uh, before the court pursuant to the plaintiff's motion for temporary custody, pairing time, support, and other relief. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, you can proceed, but you're muted. Thank you. Your Honor, this is plaintiff's motion for a temporary order for custody, pairing time, child support, and other relief. The motion lays out with particular basis upon which the request is made uh, is the mother and current custodial person to provide uh, the uh, majority of all care and uh, 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 nurturing for the minor child. The Can the court hear me? Yes. It's, it was broken up a little uh, bit, but I could hear you. To uh, offer some response to the aunt. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's a little bit jarba though, Mr. Uh, Sullivan. It's you know, dropping words or not making the best connection. Your Honor, may uh, may you go on to another motion, and I'll get a better connection. We'll 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 do that and then come back. Court will note the appearance of Ms. Smith on behalf of the plaintiff. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion to set aside referee recommendation. In this case. Uh, Ms. Smith, tell me, how is the uh, front of the court referee made a factual or legal error in this matter? Um, well, it just seems to be a factual error. Um, so the rec rec referee recommendation was for the minor who's 16 years old to spend eight weeks with the uh, plaintiff who lives in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, and then come back to Michigan and spend one week with the defendant on and off, um, but the minor is hoping to gain employment and has stated that this uh, just wouldn't work work for him if he were to gain employment. Um, it would just be a hindrance and it's a slight inconvenience for uh, the minor to be able to make it to Michigan for the one week, eight week, one week schedule. Um, so we're just asking for your Honor, to possibly make a different schedule or something um, that would be a little bit more beneficial for the minor. And also considering his age, he just no. doesn't feel comfortable with this particular schedule. Okay. Ms. Gagne, Valentine, what's your response? Um, I also agree uh, that another hearing should be put in because that paperwork also stated that neither parent had uh, come forward to try to resolve this. In October, I put in a motion um, for a visitation change. And from June through continuously, I've been uh, filing the missed visitation papers. Okay. Well, in this particular matter, it does appear that, uh, again, there's an issue with the child uh, in the summer, but I would note that uh, 
the child does have a lot of time to work throughout the child's life, but he only has limited period of time to build a relationship with uh, his parents and uh, with, uh, again, with the father in this particular case or the mother, as the case may be. Uh, court can't find, based upon the uh, pleadings or the argument, that the referee made a factual legal error. So at this point, the court is going to deny the motion. That means the order will remain in full force and effect. Uh, the court will end this matter at uh, 9, 11 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Good morning. All right. Mr. Sullivan, are we? Do we have a better connection at this point? I, th I think so, Your Honor. Okay, good. M Mr. Umloff was saying that it was better when he couldn't hear you, but otherwise, the court would like to. <laughs> Mr. Sullivan, you can proceed on your motion now. The the motion before the court is plaintiff's its motion for temporary order for custody of parenting time, the child should be the primary care provider for the minor child throughout the child's life. And the life is only four and a half months old. So the child is very, uh, the parent who's provided that care uh, uh, throughout the child's life. On the other hand, Your Honor, we have the defendant who has uh, not only not provided significant uh, daily care, but has been abusive mentally and emotionally throughout the life of the child and in the presence of the child and offer some response to the answer that was filed I think it was on Friday by Mr. Umloff the the uh, the you know the quandary about Monday motions and making decisions right off the bat without an evidentiary hearing is sometimes it's difficult to discern who's telling the truth because the court hears two different stories. But I want to point out some factually verifiable differences in their answers that uh, reflect. And in particular, I would point the court out to uh, our subsection 8A and 8B, uh, where we allege that the defendant is mentally unstable and has expressed suicidal ideations. Uh, those are set forth in paragraph uh, subparagraph 8A, the defendant simply denies that is untrue. But the fact of the matter is that the plaintiff has, for her own protection, and given the, the, the uh, significant abuse inflicted by defendant upon the interactions that she's had with the defendant since the child was born and even before. And the allegations that we make in 8A are verifiable directly because they are recorded conversations between plaintiff and defendant where the defendant said those things. I've heard those conversations several times. Uh, they've been played and that's where the allegation was set forth in uh, sub 8A. So the defendant is not, not being truthful when he simply denies that allegation. The same can be said for paragraph 8B where the defendant again simply denies the allegation is untrue. Again, this is on a tape recording of the defendant saying that exactly word for word as pled. Uh, I want to next go to, again, pointing out areas between the uh, pleadings that show the untruthfulness of the defendant. In uh, paragraph nine of our motion, we say, uh, uh, I'm sorry, paragraph um, of engaging in abusive behavior, behavior at times, in the presence of minor children, we attached to exhibit A, the ex parte personal protection order, the petition for personal protection order, and the verified statement. As to that allegation, the defendant simply denies it as untrue and further averse uh, that the order was terminated by the court at the subsequent hearing. None of that's true. In fact, I checked this morning with the court and I find out that that order was never terminated. The order was issued. The defendant challenged it without success, and the order ran its course and then expired at the uh, end of the uh, uh, expiration term of that order. So when he says that that order was terminated in a subsequent hearing, that's not true. And the ver verified statement in support of that order reflects a pattern of conduct by the defendant towards women and in the presence of children. 
I also wanted to point out that the assertion on our part that the plaintiff has been the primary caregiver certainly is is uh, is uh, uh, can be found is absolutely true because the defendant it works third shift to whatever and then he sleeps. And you can argue is it two or three thirty, but nonetheless, he's either sleeping or gone to work uh, for twenty to twenty-two hours of the child's life. So there isn't any opportunity for him to provide care. And during the night, many of the arguments that have occurred between plaintiff and defendant have occurred when plaintiff has asked the defendant to assist in, for example, getting a bottle while she changes the child's diaper in the middle of the night when the child uh, needs nurturing. Uh, so. There is a tale of uh, 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 two realities here, and the realities that we present are verified by so many things that I presented today, objectively verifiable. And when it comes to the allegation that plaintiff has had to flee the home and go to her mother's house on many occasions to avoid the, the, her mother can attest to that, that she comes victim of abuse and goes there for shelter. So. Based on all of this, we're seeking a temporary order that you uh, can put in place to give her primary custody uh, and uh, the other uh, relief side of the motion. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Umloff, your response, I have read your answer in this matter. Certainly, Your Honor. Uh, a couple of things to point out here. My client has no criminal record for violent assaults, domestic violence, battery, any sort of acts of physical violence. He does have an, o an OWI from over five years ago, but no criminal history at all involving the plaintiff or anyone else. Um, she was the person that directed profanity at him. She, she is the person that put her hands on him without his consent. She was the one that physically assaulted him in this relationship. Um, my client does work third shift, but he has people who are willing and able to provide child care. Both, provi both parties in this case provided care for this child. Um, we acknowledge in our motion that the plaintiff did most of the grocery shopping, scheduled medical appointments, and arranged for daycare, but everything else that was outlined in opposing counsel's motion, attending medical, medical appointments, feeding the child, bathing the child, putting the child to bed, both of them did that. Um, this is a child that is very young but is not breastfed, and therefore um, I would ask the court take that into consideration when considering parenting time. Um, as it relates to... Um, the allegations that my client um, has been abusive. He denies um, it is true that this is a relationship that clearly is at an end and should be at an end, but he denies being abusive. Um, he is not addicted to any substances, including marijuana. Um, he, he has used marijuana, but he stopped um, because the plaintiff, um, frankly, in their relationship was making a big deal out of it. Um, even though she, even though there were no, uh, issues with his behavior um, as a result of his use of marijuana. He's not addicted to video games. It's one of his many hobbies, and he plays video games with his older child from another relationship. Um, as it relates to, to these alleged recordings, I've not heard them, um, nor do I believe they were attached to the uh, plaintiff's motion or provided in any way to the court. With regard to the prior personal protection order, my client's recollection was that it was terminated. It is possible that perhaps it was simply modified to allow him to do uh, uh, exchanges with um, with his previous significant other for his child from his earlier relationship. What we're asking for uh, in this situation is that the parties uh, share joint legal and physical custody of the child, have equal parenting time on a two, two, three schedule with alternating holidays, child support according to the Michigan child support formula, and um, deny the request that my client undergo a psychological evaluation with Dr. Haugen. If the court is inclined to order that he undergo a psychological evaluation, um, we would request that both parties undergo them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, what the court's gonna do court, No, I don't need a response, Mr. Sullivan. In this matter, the court does has read the pleadings, uh, responses. It does appear, obviously, that the uh, defendant does work a third shift is obviously not available during those times. As Mr. Umloff acknowledged in their answer to paragraph seven, they acknowledge that the plaintiff was the one that did the grocery shopping. This made the medical appointments range daycare. As I read between the lines in this matter, it does appear that she's the one that's provided the primary care. The court will grant to the plaintiff the uh, custody of the minor child. The court will grant to the defendant uh, parenting time uh, the parenting time will be alternating weekends, but it'll be from Saturday at 9 o'clock a.m. to Sunday at 6 
caught the MLB just a one overnight. The other times, as well as the alternating holidays, at this point, the defendant will pay support consistent with the income of the parties. I'll leave the attorneys to, uh, again, work that out and um, prepare that. Mr. Sullivan, I'll ask that you would prepare the order and the uh, UCSO in this matter. Anything else, Mr. Sullivan? No, thank you. Okay, Mr. Omloff, anything else? No, no, Your Honor, thank you. Okay, court will end this matter at 9.23 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good court day. Court will note the appearance of Mr. Omloff on behalf of plaintiff. The matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion for uh, return of the child. Mr. Omloff. Your Honor, the parties in this case share three children. Um, and their custody order that was entered back in 2020 grants Graceland Mayhew, my client, primary physical custody, and the defendant parenting time, um, in essence, two days a week, um, along with alternating holidays. Um, beginning on December 31st, the defendant stopped allowing the children to return to the plaintiff. He filed a, uh, a claim with CPS. Uh, that resulted in a temporary safety plan that prevented the children from having any contact with the plaintiff. We attached that to our motion. Um, this was on a temporary basis while CPS was trying to figure out what was going on. He filed a custody motion January 3rd, um, repeating the same things he, re he stated in his CPS claim. My client uh, participated in the investigation, did everything CPS asked. There was an updated safety plan signed on January 19th, 2024, that does not prevent the children from seeing my client are coming back to her care. Um, it has some case specific requirements that she'll use appropriate behavior management for the children, such as uh, time in their bedroom or in a corner for less than 10 minutes. Um, however, uh, Mr. Pinch has refused to allow the children to come back to the home. Um, at a hearing on January 23rd, referee Scott Holman set this matter for an evidentiary hearing and a friend of the court investigation, but told the defendant that the current order has not been modified. Um, however, the defendant continues to refuse to give the minor children back to my client, um, and he won't do it until after an evidentiary hearing. This court hasn't modified the current order. There's no safety plan preventing my, my client from having her regularly scheduled time with the children. She has acknowledged that she will follow the terms of the safety plan, the current safety plan that's been outlined by CPS, um, and yet Mr. Pinch still refuses um, to let the children go back and participate in the regular um, parenting time schedule that's outlined in their order. Um, we're asking that, the, <clears throat> excuse me, that the children be returned to my client and that uh, their regularly scheduled parenting time per their 2020 order be continued until this uh, evidentiary hearing takes place. Um, if Mr. Mr. Pinch continues to refuse, we request that law enforcement be ordered to uh, effectuate these, these exchanges. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pinch, what's uh, what's your response? Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Hello, Your Honor. In response to Grayson and Mr. Umloff's ex parte order for the return of the children, um, which I did only receive as of this last Friday in the mail, I haven't had a chance to send you anything in response, but I have written a statement out I would like to propose to you, Your Honor. Okay. Um, on December 29th, 2023, my children came to my house at 6 p.m. When my children normally get to my house, I would get them around for bed. Um, within two hours of my children laying down, Allison came into my room crying, um, upset that she couldn't sleep, and then started regarding to me the situations that are happening at her mother's house. Um, roughly half hour after that, Macy had came into my room hearing Allison cry and issued her concerns with her mother at that time. I didn't ask questions. I let her speak and Macy speak of what was going on. Um, it was that night that I filed the report with the police. I didn't coach or brainwash my children at all. I took in what my kids told me and with hurt and sadness I see in them, as I stated as well, and with past issues that have not been brought to the court's attention. Um, one thing just recently, as of a couple months ago, um, the kids were getting ready to go home to Graceland at 6 p.m. on Sunday evening, and Jackson would not leave my arms. Um, he's my youngest, my son. He would not leave. He was crying, screaming, and even began to start hitting Graceland, saying he did not want to go with her. Um, that continued for about 15, 20 minutes, Your Honor, where Graceland reluctantly decided that we would change our current custody agreement and go from Friday at 6 p.m. until Tuesday at 6 p.m. to hope that Jackson would calm down and come back to her on Tuesday. When I went to go take the children back on Tuesday, he was still reluctant and very seemed, seemed to show very retroactive behavior towards Graceland. I calmed him down and he went with Graceland. Um, since then, though, 
I have contacted Graceland on multiple occasions, not denying her custody, not denying her visits with the children. I have stated to her all I wish is for her to agree that not to admit what she did in the past because she's denying she smacked them. She's denying that they would hold jugs in the corner. I don't ask her to admit any of this, Your Honor. I just wish that she promised in the future there will be no physical assault. There will be no physical reprimands. As she stated, 10 minutes in the corner is enough. Um, I, would, I would like to give the kids back to Graceland. The kids would love to see her. They just state every time I wish to send them back that they don't want to get hurt, Your Honor. And I fully believe my children what has happened. My children are very smart. They're, they love their mother. They love me very much. And they wouldn't lie about a situation as extreme as this. Um, I ask that if you do grant the ex parte order to Graceland that we go on a um, temporary joint custody agreement until the court decides in the further dates of what could be concluded, a seven day, seven day um, period. And while Graceland has the kids in her custody or while I have the kids in my custody, we will sign an agreement with you today stating there will be no physical harm, there will be no mental abuse, and that the kids will be safe in her custody and in my custody. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Your Honor, if I may? No, you know, I don't need that, Mr. Omaha. In this case, uh, Mr. Pinch, just so you're aware, is that there is an order in place from uh, October 16, 2020. That is the order that's currently in the place. It's not been changed. Uh, yes. The court cannot change custody without an evidentiary hearing. So I understand your request of, okay, change it at this particular point. I cannot do that until I've had an evidentiary hearing. And the court just like the parties are required to comply with the order, the court's required to enforce the order. So I have to until it's changed. So the court will enforce the order. The court will order that the children be returned to the plaintiff consistent with that October 16, 2020 order, uh, no later than 5 o'clock p.m. this evening. The court will order, uh, again, that the parties comply with the order. I will, however, based on what Mr. Pinch has stated, and obviously there was some uh, uh, child protective services involvement, the court will put in the order, Mr. Omloff, if you would, that there would be no no corporal punishment by either of the parties in this particular matter. And uh, that would be the temporary order until such time as either the referee has his evidentiary hearing or we have an evidentiary hearing to address the uh, matter on a permanent basis. So. Mr. Umloff, you can prepare that order, submit under seven-day notice of entry, and uh, then hopefully we can get this matter in for a hearing as soon as possible and uh, be able to ferret out all the uh, detail. Certainly. One question, Your Honor. Um, yes. The provision that I requested that law enforcement be ordered to uh, effectuate these transfers. If you you could include that as well, Mr. Umloff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm not, I'm not granting at this point as your uh, request for the... Uh, psychological assessment if, if i might if i might say something your honor um i will i will completely agree with um your statement on, well your decision i will take the children there at 5 p.m at your requested i do request that the police not be involved my children are very distraught and emotionally damaged from a certain situation and i feel that the police would only agitate that problem more um no, mr umloff's order won't be entered today so okay. uh, what happens is what we can do is assess it and determine what happens this week. If we have difficulties with the transfer, then the court will order that the police be involved. But that gives you this week, Mr. Pinch, to, uh, again, work with the kids, calm them down, whatever it takes to get them to go back, back and forth. And But if, again, if that doesn't happen, then we may have to have law enforcement involved. Okay. I might have heard you. In, I might have heard you incorrectly. Do I return them today or next Monday? Today at five o'clock p.m. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Court would note the appearance of Mr. Sullivan on behalf of the plaintiff. This matter is before the court on plaintiff's motion for change of domicile. As stated, the uh, defendant has not appeared. This matter was scheduled for nine thirty. It's now nine forty-three a.m. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, anything else to add in this matter? I, I don't think so. The The motion states with particularity the law and facts upon which it's based. So we're simply asking that you enter an order consistent with our prayer for relief. Okay. Court does note in this matter that the plaintiff does have sole legal and sole physical custody and pursuant to uh, MCL 722.31 parens 2. Uh, court would note that, uh, again, uh, the issue of... Uh, 
of a change in domicile that uh, does not is not applicable where one parent has sole legal and physical custody. That's uh, reiterated in the Spears versus Bergman case. The court will grant the motion for change of domicile. The only thing I'd state, Mr. Sullivan, I'd also order in this matter that the uh, plaintiff would provide uh, an address to the defendant when she is has an address and is located out of state and that uh, she would cooperate to affect a parenting time plan with the uh, defendant as well. So you can include that in the order and uh, anything else, Mr. Sullivan? No, no I just, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with respect to the latter part of the order, I have the order drafted. I have that she shall provide the front of the court with an address upon her move. The only, with regard to the latter part, uh, years ago, there was an order put in place that would be able to put himself to be a fit parent for parenting time. And he's never done any of those things. So okay, that, my client is more than happy to, to do that, provided that order is complied with at some point. That's fine. You could put in there that the uh, parties would cooperate for a plan pursuant to that prior order then. And then those provisions would continue. Very good. Thank okay. you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Court will end this matter at 9.45 a.m. You're free to go. Have Court a will day. note the appearance Thank of Ms. You. McNiff on behalf of the plaintiff, Ms. McKenzie on behalf of defendant. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion for custody, parenting time, and support, Ms. McNiff. Your Honor, first I would, I would like to um, say that the responses to both our motion and our complaint uh, were a little unusual. And I would ask that this court not accept the response to our motion as a request for a change of domicile. I believe that it needs to be noticed up in a separate motion uh, for one to keep the record very clear and, and to, to make sure the allegations are, are very clear. I don't think it's appropriate to ask for a change of domicile as a response to a motion. Um, well, what, what happens, the court will, uh, court will note that it would not be timely in any event uh, for the filing of a motion just because it's a response. So the court will not take up that issue today that uh, the defendant can file a separate motion and we'll address that after proper notice. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first of all, I, I would like to say that while, while there are allegations on, on defendant's side that the parties have been separated for a year, in fact, they've been separated for two years. And during that period of time, my client has had the care not only of the the party's two biological children, but also of Ms. Bird's child from a previous relationship, Miles. Uh, my client has has had the care of Miles since Miles was a, approximately a year old, and he's he's now 14. Uh, that child and all of the children have resided in, in, in Michigan uh, so, since they've been, well, Miles since he was about a year, the other since they've been born. Uh, I know, I know that the issue Ms. McNiff has brought up, the court doesn't have the authority to to grant uh, custody of Miles to a non-party at this point. So I'm not going to be addressing that either in today's hearing. And and, and I understand that, Your Honor. I I, I know that. I, I, my, my, my point is that Ms. Bird trusted Mr. Fields, not only with the children's two biological children, but also with her 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 other child and left him in in Mr. Fields' care. We understand the court can't rule on anything having to do with Miles, but I think it's important for the court to understand that while Ms. Bird makes significant and serious allegations against Mr. Fields and his ability to parent these children, for a period of two years, she left a child over which Mr. Fields has no authority in his care, which lead, would, would lead us to believe and, and should lead the court to believe that her allegations of Mr. Fields' inability to care properly for the children are, are completely false and, and, and disingenuous. Uh, mom alleges that that Mr. Fields wouldn't allow her to have the children for parenting time during that period of separation. And yet Ms. Bird never came to the court and filed a motion for custody of the two children, never filed for parenting time, never took miles out of Mr. Fields' care, which absolutely she had the authority to do. So again, all of her allegations against Mr. Fields should should fall flat uh, with, with this court. Uh, in, in the answer to the complaint, which I didn't address in, in writing, um, Ms. Bird alleges that Hunter had, the, the party's uh, sixth grader, had 50 absences so far this year. That's a flat out lie, Your Honor. Uh, Hunter has had 50 hours of absences pursuant to, to what the school had. Part of that was the school also showed him absent uh, for three days during sixth grade camp which shouldn't have been, and, and the, the school has now fixed that. And there was an additional half day 
uh, uh, that the school showed that he was absent, that was a, an error on part the part of the school. In fact, Hunter has missed two days, two full days and three half days for illnesses, not 50 days of school. Hunter does excellent in school. His lowest grade is a B. He generally gets straight A's. He's, he's, he's a fantastic student and, and he attends school. And dad is very committed to, to his education. Uh, there are all kinds of allegations that dad uses street drugs and has substance abuse issues. That absolutely is denied. Dad does not use street drugs. We don't even know what street drugs are being referenced here, but it's it's not true. Um, if the court wanted my client to, to go and take a drug test today, he would pass. He, he would be completely free of drugs. Uh, my client has smoked marijuana in the past, most recently uh, around Thanksgiving. He, he smoked a little bit with Ms. Bird's father, uh, but generally he doesn't smoke marijuana either. My client doesn't drink very much. He has at most one cocktail maybe once a month uh, because it, alcohol gives him headaches. We asked in our original motion if the court would prohibit the use of alcohol when the parties have the children. It makes no sense that we would do that if my client had a drinking or substance abuse problem. We would welcome that prohibition. We would welcome a prohibition against the parties using any recreational uh, drugs or illegal drugs or, or alcohol. Uh, the other side has asked for substance abuse assessments. We have no problem with that as long as it's mutual. We also have no problem with psychological evaluations so long as that is mutual. Uh, we have alleged that Ms. Bird has bipolar disorder. That's based on the fact that when she was pregnant with Grady, she was taking lithium. She's denied that. We think that psychological evaluations are absolutely appro appropriate given the fact that we know she was taking lithium, which is generally taken for a mood disorder. Uh, and, and that became a problem during her, her pregnancy with, with Grady, as a matter of fact. Uh, Ms. Bird is asking for uh, much more time with Hunter than she's had in the past two years. In the past two years, she's had Hunter for six to seven overnights in, in, in a period of two years. She rarely takes him. She doesn't have a bed for him. When Hunter goes to her house and spends the night, he has to sleep on the couch. She has she simply has no space for him and the child doesn't want to go with her. Uh, he's he's rather angry with her. So we would we would ask that the court deny her request for overnights with Hunter, that at best the court give her some daytime parenting time with Hunter to try to rebuild that relationship uh, that she simply has ignored for the, for the past two years. We would also ask that the court prohibit Hunter from babysitting Grady. We believe that Hunter isn't old enough. He's not mature enough. Grady's a handful. He has some developmental problems. While Grady is very intelligent, uh, my client believes that he may be on the autism spectrum and, and he, he, my client would like to have him assess for autism. Ms. Bird, being a PA, thinks that she knows what, what is going on with Grady and she is not inclined to allow uh, an assessment of him, but some of the developmental issues we think could be resolved if he, in fact, did have an assessment. Grady's had it a bit rough. Uh, during the pregnancy with Grady, Ms. Bird was in an auto accident. She was on medications uh, during that pregnancy. And then when he was two, she left and didn't see him for six months. Uh, so that that there's there's no wonder that the child would, would have some, some developmental issues. But, Your Honor, the bottom line here is that Ms. Bird has been an absentee parent. She, she left two years ago. She has not spent a lot of time with any of the children. And until Mr. Fields brought this motion as the result of threats to take the, that Ms. Bird was going to take and move the children to Tennessee, she, she hasn't pursued any legal remedies for that. She's simply allowed Mr. Fields to care for the children for their medical needs, for their educational needs, for their financial needs, and for their day-to-day -day care. It's it's actually hurt his business because he has had the full-time care of these children. And we would ask that the court maintain him as the sole legal uh, custodian of the party's two biological children and uh, give him sole physical custody. We have no objection to Ms. Bird having standard parenting time with Grady and some daytime parenting time with Hunter uh, and until such time as she can rebuild that relationship and find him an appropriate place to, to sleep. We would ask that the court prohibit her from moving the children from the state of Michigan, that the court order child support, uh, that the court prohibit the use of alcohol and illicit drugs when the children are, are in the a, a party's custody. Um, and I think I said that, we, that the court prohibit Hunter from babysitting Grady. Okay, thank you. Ms. McKenzie? Thank you, Your Honor. The established custodial environment is actually with both parents. And the fact that the plaintiff father has not followed the party's agreement, uh, we're asking the court not to sanction that. Ms. Bird has continually uh, asked for uh, the 
um, custody arrangement, verbal custody arrangement with Hunter, um, and that has been denied. Hunter is being used as a, an emotional crutch for the father who does have serious psychological um, and psychiatric issues. He needs to be with somebody all the time. And uh, he has told multiple people that he would take his own life if, if he had to be by himself. And this is totally inappropriate for a sixth grader to have to be the moral, moral and um, psychological support for his father. Miss Bird, uh, what has not been addressed here is that Miss Bird had to run for her life. She escaped the household uh, because she was a catalyst. She did a, a, an honest analysis of what was happening in the household in 2021 and simply had to get out because the plaintiff father saw her and used her and, and emotionally beat her up and physically uh, had attacked her also previous to the, the escape in October of 21. Um, his tendency to psychological issues and keeping the children from her, as well as the domestic violence history that he has against her. This is a classic case of an abused woman who was forced out of the home. So our position is that she didn't go willingly, but she left for the reason that she was the catalyst and things were better for the boys with the dad if she was not physically present in the home. And the established custodial environment was with the parties before the separation and remained with the parties based, uh, remained with the parties based on their verbal agreement Miss uh, Bird pursued her physician assistant uh, degree, got licensed, got, got an apartment immediately upon getting her and with the plaintiff father on his word that it would be 50-50. He still pines for her in, a, in an unhealthy manner. And by that, I mean in a controlling manner and has threatened individuals. There was one individual she went out with. I attached a, a text regarding that gentleman where the plaintiff threatened the, the, the gentleman. And that was almost a year after the parties had separated. So this is, this is more about a, uh, a physical and emotional abuser of the mother of his children. And it is less about the benefit the best interest of the children. So we're asking the court to deny the temporary and permanent physical and legal custody of the children to go to the to the father that is not in their best interest. The mother makes the medical appointment. She started the, the um, uh, Hunter's interest in lacrosse. She uh, has attended the, the lacrosse. She attends the activities. This is not an absentee mother. She is physically not in texts back and forth with Hunter all the time, FaceTimes and so forth. So they have the best relationship that, that they, they can have under the, under the fact that it is necessary for her not to be in the household because that incites the wrath, the rage um, <clears throat> of the plaintiff father. With regard to taking away the 50-50 custody of uh, Grady, that, that is not in Grady's best interest. Grady is, is behind in his, uh, I didn't hear anything or read anything about autism until five minutes ago. Um, he, he turned five years old just this past Saturday and was only potty trained about five months ago. So, so the father has withheld Hunter. He has, uh, despite the verbal agreement of 50-50 custody, the father has planned activities without consulting Miss Bird, has planned activities in a purposeful way on time that should have been uh, Miss Bird's. And now he's asking the court to sanction his poor conduct, threatening conduct, uh, next to deadly conduct uh, against the plaintiff or the defendant mother, and to sanction his withholding of the boys. She was working under very tough circumstances to do what was in her children's best interest and had to make a, a critically important decision of leaving the household 
so that the boys would no longer witness the emotional and physical abuse um, of the plaintiff father. So we're asking in the court to leave things as, as is and either deny the motion or set this matter for an evidentiary hearing. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Well, in this particular matter, there are a lot of allegations in this case, a lot of hyperbole as well uh, presented in this matter. But as the court uh, reviews this, it does appear that when uh, the parties separated back in 2021, that the uh, defendant had left for an appreciable period of time. Uh, there's been no denial of the fact that uh, she's only had uh, Hunter on uh, basically uh, six six or more times in the past two years. Uh, and uh, so the court does believe that it's appropriate to continue uh, the status quo in this matter, which is leaving the children in the care and custody of the plaintiff. So the court's going to grant the custody, temporary custody of the children to the plaintiff in this matter. The court would allow the defendant to have standard parenting time. The court would order that uh, Mr. Fields, that you would not schedule any activities or events for Hunter other than his lacrosse when uh, Again, uh, when it would be the uh, defendant's time to have Hunt Hunter with her. So uh, other than his lacrosse schedule, which he seems very invested in, and apparently the parents are invested in that as well, and they know that schedule. Otherwise, there should not be any activity scheduled for Hunter. Court would order that the plaintiff would pay uh, child support consistent with the child support formula. Court would order that both parties would not consume alcohol when the children are in their respective care. And the uh, court would ask Ms. McNiff that she would prepare that order submitted under a seven-day notice of entry. Thank you, Your Honor. Court, when this Thank matter is at 10.04 a.m., you're free to go. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Sure. You stay. Court would yeah. note the appearance of Ms. Reed on behalf of the uh, plaintiff. Just to confirm, uh, Mr. DuPont says, Mr. Toth or Ms. Capture are not representing you at this time. Is that correct? No, Your Honor, they're not. Okay, thank you. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion to show cause. I've reviewed that. Um, anything else to add other than your motion, Ms. Reed? No, Your Honor, just no contact means no contact, and so we're trying to enforce that order. Okay. Mr. DuPont, uh, what's your response? Um, on or about the 20th of December, I don't have the exact date, um, I called uh, Ms. Van Deventer on a uh, speaker and just thanked her for a Christmas present for Peyton. Peyton was in the car. There was no communication. And it was a, a the conversation was maybe 40 seconds at the most. And I just thanked her for a Christmas gift that she dropped for Peyton. And she just said, I love you both. And that was the extent of the conversation. Okay. Well, just, just so you know, uh, as we proceed, in this uh, particular case, Mr. DuPont's recognized that no contact means that, absolutely no contact. So I understand what you're saying. And uh, again, I'm just letting you know that it means no contact whatsoever. So the court won't basically sanction or allow any contact for any reason in this particular matter. That order will remain in full force and effect. Uh, so that will be the order is that there be again that that order be complied with be complied with absolutely that there are no exceptions on the order and uh, that will be the uh, again continuing order of the court the court will reserve on the other requests for attorney fees etc in this matter pending any further particular violations so if there are violations in the, in the future sir the court could take that into consideration on findings of contempt or on uh, as it relates to any costs or fees or things of that nature. But I'm not going to at this time. It appears unless there's other evidence of other contacts that the uh, contact that was had was minimal and de minimis. But the uh, uh, court would just reiterate no contact whatsoever. And let's read. You can put that in an order and submit under seven day notice of entry. For purposes of the order, Mr. DuPont is not in contempt. There will be no contact continuing in the court's reserving on attorney's fees. Is that correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay. Thank you both. Uh, court in this matter at uh, 10.09 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day.
Court will note the appearance of Ms. Reed on behalf of the plaintiff. Defendants appearing in pro per. The defendant has filed a motion to set aside the referee recommendation in this uh, particular matter. The alleged basis under the motion says, and I quote, I was given three different court dates. The court date I did attend, I didn't get to see the judge, end quote. Mr. Ainsley, in this matter, the hearings were with the referee, so you wouldn't have seen a judge any event. No, I mean, like on the on the Zoom, I, de I never was um, deconnected to the, on Zoom. Oh, to the referee. Yeah. Okay. Well, you have you have a particular. You have to get in the correct uh, again the correct number, et cetera. Anything else other than as you stated as your basis for objecting? Okay. Any other basis? Um. <clears throat> Uh, no, nope. no. Nope. Oh, okay. Miss Reed, I've read your uh, answer. Is there anything else that you want to add? Just that there have been three different hearings in this matter, one before your honor, that that order is currently under FOC or waiting FOC approval. And then we're going to be noticing that up for entry. But I believe that Mr. Ainsley is starting to abuse the process. He's picking random dates to file parenting time complaints when he hasn't seen this child in two years. He's not appearing at any of the hearings. He did not appear at the referee hearing. Referee did check the Zoom waiting room. No one was there. He checked the in-person room. No one was there. He did not appear for your honors hearing. And now he's incurring my client additional attorney's fees. So we're asking for attorney's fees in the amount of eight twelve fifty. Okay. Well, in this matter, um, Mr. Ainsley, when you do file an objection, court rule is uh, Michigan Court Rule 3.0. 215 parens e parens 4 states that you have to do a clear and concise statement of specific findings and law to which you object. Your only objection was the fact that you had different court dates. And obviously in these types of hearings, oftentimes you have different court dates. And uh, in this matter, there was a show cause hearing set for January 10, 2024. It was served on the parties on 12-22-2023. Uh, there was a hearing uh, re-notice for January 8, 2024, which was served upon you on December 28, 2023. So you had adequate notice of these. And if you look at the notices, the notices state that it's your responsibility to make sure that you can connect, that you are in the hearings. It states, in fact, tells you that you should make sure ahead of time that you have proper uh, connections, et cetera. And... Uh, Apparently that wasn't done because you weren't able to make contact uh, with the hearing. As Ms. Reed stated, the referee checked the waiting room, checked everything, and you were not present. So I don't know if you connected with a different room or whatever, but it's your obligation to make sure that you connect and have hearings, just like today. If you didn't appear today, we would have dismissed your uh, motion. Uh, in this matter, a court does note that the defendant has not alleged any factual or legal errors made by the referee in this matter and the court cannot grant your uh, request unless you can establish a factual or legal error made by the referee so the court will deny the uh, motion in this uh, particular matter court does believe that uh, again attorney fees would be appropriate the court will grant the uh, plaintiff the requested attorney fees of eight hundred twelve dollars and fifty cents Ms. Reed, you can put that in the order and submit that under seven-day notice of entry. Thank you, Your Honor. That will conclude the matter at 10.36 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Court will note the appearance of Ms. Redmond on behalf of the plaintiff. Ms. Redmond, you got to unmute. Good um, Enlighten me. What's happening in the case and where are we at? So we were scheduled for mediation about three weeks ago, January 12th, um, and defendant failed to uh, contact the mediator or pay for mediation. So mediation was canceled. Um, I believe Mr. Brundage sent a notice to the court regarding this um, and plaintiff filed her property chart um, under the deadline. Um, and now we are requesting that a default be entered for defendant's failure to um, go through with court ordered mediation. Um, and that is where we're currently at. Okay. Well, I'll let you know just for future reference, the court doesn't default people for not attending mediation because under okay. the court rule, mediation is uh, is voluntary. So I can't do that. 
Okay. So what we're at, if we, if we haven't settled the matter, then what we can do is uh, set the matter for trial and then uh, proceed with trial in this case. Okay. Yes, no settlement has been reached. Okay. Uh, Ms. Redmond, why don't you check your schedule and see if you're open on uh, the 7th or 8th of March? Either of those days works for me. Okay. How long do you think it's going to take to try the matter? Um, I would request at least a half a day, I believe. There's significant property. Well, um, we, and we'll schedule for a whole day. We don't. Okay. That way we have sufficient time. Okay. Okay. Mr. Reininger, is that your understanding of what's happened? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Why don't we schedule it for the uh, Thursday, uh, March 7th at 8.30 a.m. I will say be prompt because we start at 8.30. If, if, we, if the court's ready to go at 8.30 and nobody's here, we're going to start at 8.30. So we'll send out the, we'll get the notices sent out probably yet today or tomorrow. And you, so you'll get those and, uh, and we'll uh, just see you back on March 7th. Okay. The minor child children interview if the children are five and about um, over five. Is is custody still at issue, Ms. Redmond? Yes, it is. Then I'll have to interview the children then. Uh, what we'll do is, I'll tell you, what we usually will do is schedule the children in at 815. Whoever has the custody of the children is going to have to have a third party bring them to the courtroom, the courthouse, and I'll interview them that way. You know, you don't have to, you're not running them where, okay, we want to start the trial, but I can talk to the children. Uh, and then uh, usually wouldn't take more than 15 minutes, and then we'll be able to start at 830. Okay. 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 Thank you. You're free to go. Have a good day, and we'll see you back on March 7th. Uh, thank you. So I thought he was on board. Mr. Schaefer, what'd you do? Did you scare Mr. Martin away? I don't know if I did or not. He's not present. Have you had I, any uh, conversation? I had a conversation with him about a week ago, and uh, so I thought he was on board. Okay, why don't we do this? We'll put you back in the waiting room, wait a little few more minutes and then uh, bring you back in and try to figure out did you get resolution at uh, mediation or not no it it's been a it's been a convoluted mess with uh, Chuck getting out of it uh we're we're kind of back at square one so I think we need some discovery and then uh, mediation set that's my analysis of it okay well hopefully we'll get back in and we can uh, we can talk at that time okay very good okay 24 at 1 43 p.m. Court will note the appearance of Ms. McNiff on behalf of plaintiff, Mr. Toth on behalf of defendant. Uh, obviously, before we went on the record, uh, they were talking about uh, the parties having settled a number of the issues at the time of mediation, but apparently you're still working on some of the final details. Your, Your Honor, um, if, if I may, on we kind of ran out of time on Friday. Um, we, we went at, we, we were from nine till a little bit after 2 p.m., and both lawyers had conflicts. And so I think the intent is I've got a message into John Brundage that as soon as this settlement conference is done, we're going to get him back on the phone and try to wrap things up. We made a terrific amount of progress. And uh, I would agree with Ms. McNiff. Our, our plan is to wrap things up this afternoon. Okay. So why don't we do this is why don't we set it for a pro con uh, maybe in a couple of weeks and then hopefully you'd have everything done by that time. That would be great. Yeah, that sounds okay. wonderful. Okay. We'll set that up and send you notice, and uh, then hopefully we get resolution and uh, we have everything done then. And Mike, I have one more settlement conference, and then I can jump on that call. Okay, I'll give Brendan a call now and get him started. Thank okay. you very much, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. The appearance of Ms. Yeah. McNiff on behalf of plaintiff, Mr. Parrott on behalf of the defendant. Uh, enlighten me what's happening in this matter, Ms. McNiff. Um, we went to mediation. We failed miserably, and I think we need a trial date. Okay. Is that your understanding, Mr. Parrott? Yes, it is, Your Honor. Okay. How, how many days are we looking for a trial? Um, we're just looking at custody and parenting time, of course, support, but uh, I, I 
I would think two days. I, I think Ms. Uh, Paisno agrees. Okay. What we'll do is we'll get in touch with you then and uh, check your schedules and see uh, see what will work where we can give you a couple of days and uh, then uh, set it at that point. Very anything good. else, Ms. McNiff? No, sir. Okay. Mr. Barrett? No, thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Okay, thank you. We'll let you go. Have a good afternoon. You too. Bye-bye. At 1.50 p.m. Court will note the appearance of Ms. Crantham on behalf of the defendant, the plaintiff appearing in pro per. Uh, this is the time and place set for the settlement conference. Uh, I did note that you had mediation uh, just last week. Uh, Ms. Grantham, what happened with the mediation? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, my client was able to appear. Unfortunately, uh, the plaintiff was unable to appear, but we have good news for the court. We have reached a settlement, um, and I have drafted a uh, stipulated consent final order regarding custody, parenting time, and child support that all of the parties have signed. We're just uh, right now waiting for the front of the court to approve that, and we will have that to uh, your court as soon as we have it uh, available to us. But I do want to ask the court one thing to clarify. In my notes, it states $15 per hour um, uh, at full time. Um, I'm understanding that the uh, the the plaintiff um, put on his verified com uh, order that he does work somewhere and makes a gross um, uh, weekly income of 450. My client, however, is still in between jobs. Um, can I compute her income at minimum wage, which I checked was just ten dollars and ten cents? No, we've been imputing at the 15 because obviously there's so many jobs that are you know minimal jobs that are paying that at the uh, commencement. So we're kind of taking that as the minimum uh, for purposes of calculation. So do I calculate both parties yes. at 15? Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Garrett, is that your understanding? You've come to a full resolution in this case? Yep. Okay. Great. Then we'll just wait for the uh, front of the court approval and uh, we'll sign everything at that time once we get the approval. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you all for your diligence in getting the matter resolved, and you're free to go. Have a good afternoon. At 1 thank you. PM. Good afternoon to everyone. Court would note, for the record, Mr. Hayward, uh, when we first came on, we you weren't available, and I thought possibly the matter had resolved, so I did speak to Mr. Schaefer to ask him about mediation, whether it had resolved the matter, and he said it had not, but uh, I wanted you to be aware that I talked to him thinking maybe that's why you weren't here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I apologize for that. I, I was in the waiting room. Don't know. Don't know why I was okay. not available. I think she was looking for Mr. Martin. <laughs> okay, that that could be it. I think that's what happened. So, Mr. Hayward, is what Mr. Schaefer said accurate? That you just didn't come to any resolution on the matter. So no no resolution has been reached thus far, Your Honor. Uh, we do, however, have mediation scheduled for. Uh, next week on on the fourteenth, uh, so there's potential okay. for for resolution there. Okay, that accurate, Mr. Schaefer. Yeah, that, that's correct. There, uh, uh, before it changed hands, uh, there had not been much. There has been no discovery to speak of, and little efforts to resolve it. This was filed in July; didn't get service until October. So it's got behind the uh, eight ball early on. Okay. What we'll do is we'll reset it out about 30 days <clears throat> to uh, allow you to complete the mediation. And if there's some discovery that's necessary, uh, I'd say get it out so that I don't want to come in here in 30 days and they say, oh, we've got all this discovery to get it out. And then we'll know at that time when the deadline would be so that we can set it for trial if, in fact, we don't have resolution. Okay, fine. Thank, thank you, you, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. I'll let you go. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Okay, you, thank you. Well. you too as well. See you. We do not have Troy Fox or Attorney Oatman present. Yep. So we are going to do a pro con today. There should have been a stip to proceed that was filed with the court. Okay. Great. Court will note the appearance of Ms. Bailey Hobbs on behalf of the plaintiff. Uh, Ms. Fox, you have to unmute yourself. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Bailey Hobbs. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Fox, do you recall signing a complaint for divorce on or about September 11th, 2023? Yes. And when you filed the complaint for divorce, had you been a resident of the state of Michigan for at least 180 days? 
Yes. And had you been a resident of Calhoun County for at least 10 days? Yes. When you signed the complaint, were all the statements true? Yes. Are they still true today? Yes. You and the defendant have two minor children, is that correct? Yes. Are you currently pregnant? No. In the complaint, you allege there had been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent the objects of matrimony have been destroyed, and there remains no reasonable likelihood that the marriage could be preserved. Was that true when you signed the complaint? Yes. Is it still true today? Yes. Do you believe that there is any possibility of reconciliation? No. You participated in mediation where you and Mr. Fox reached an agreement regarding the issues in your divorce. Is that correct? Yes. Did you understand that agreement? Yes. Did anybody force or coerce you to make that agreement? No. Have you had a chance to read the judgment of divorce? Yes. Did you understand it? Yes. Do you agree that the mediation agreement is correctly reflected in that judgment of divorce? Yes. You understand that you have a right to have a trial in your divorce case? Yes. And if the court enters the judgment of divorce that you have agreed on, you are waiving that right to have a trial? Yes. Do you understand that you could have achieved a result that was better or worse or the same if you were to have had a trial? Yes. Do you understand that if the court accepts your agreement and enters the judgment, then that judgment is binding and cannot be changed? Yes. Do you believe that the custody and parenting time provisions in the judgment of divorce are in the best interest of your children? Yes. Do you believe the property and de uh, debt division in the judgment of divorce is fair and equitable? Yes. Are you asking this court to accept a settlement agreement and enter the consent judgment of divorce and uniform child support order when the court receives it? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. And I will note for the court that I have sent the judgment of divorce and child support order to the friend of the court for approval. I have not heard back from them just yet. Okay, thank you. Court will find that the testimony does establish the statutory basis. There has been a showing there's been a breakdown of the marital relationship. The court will preserve the proofs at this point, pending our receipt of the friend of the court approval and the running of the time frame. Uh, Ma'am, it's going to be a little bit uh, before we can get that entered because it's now only 140 days old. It has to be 180 days before. So we've got 40 days, but that'll give front of the court time to do the approval, get that back, and then we will enter it as soon as uh, we can on the 181st day. Okay? okay? Okay. Okay. At that point, you will be divorced. Best of luck to you, ma'am. I hope everything works out for you. And uh, we'll end at 2.01 p.m. You're free to go. Yeah. Have a good day. Thank you. Good afternoon you, to Adam. both of you. Good court will note that the court has been informed that you did settle the matter at mediation. Is that accurate, Ms. Brown? Yes, that is accurate. Okay. And Mr. Brown, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Ms. Brown, you're going to have to prepare the uh, judgment of divorce, the uh, uniform child support order, and the judgment information form. Have you been working on those? Yes, I have been working with FOC representative. Uh, my first submission, um, there were some additional forms that we had to get completed due to the fact that we're opting out of FOC. Okay, so you had to do an opt out. That's fine. Yes. As long as you're not on public assistance, the UER, you would be entitled to opt out. Correct. Yep. So I, yes, I have been working with them to get that. Okay. What we'll do is what we'll do is we'll reschedule this in about, I'll say about. 30 days. That way we can keep track of it. Because uh, otherwise we'll just get lost if we don't do that. Uh, I'll tell you, Mr. Brown, we'll send notice to you, but being that it's settled, you don't have to appear at that, uh, at that time if you don't desire to. Okay. Ms. Brown, what we could do is I could take some, some uh, proofs from you at this point, some testimony. And then that way, uh, if, if you get all the paperwork in, we could actually get it done in less than the 30 days if we get the front of the court approval. Just try to speak up. You're a little bit faint, Ms. Brown. Ms. Brown, at the time that you uh, filed this action, uh, had you resided in the county of Calhoun and the state of Michigan for more than 180 days immediately preceding the filing? Yes, I did. And at the time that you filed the complaint, were all the allegations in the complaint true and do they remain true today? I didn't hear you, ma'am. Did you answer? Yes, they do. Yes, they okay. do. Okay. You state in the complaint that there has been a breakdown of the marital relationship to the extent the object of matrimony have been destroyed and there remains no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. Is that a correct statement? That is correct. Is there any chance that you and the defendant could reconcile and live together as husband and wife? No. Are you currently pregnant? No. Thank you. 
court will find that the uh, testimony does establish the statutory basis. There has been a showing there's been a breakdown of the marital relationship. Uh, court will preserve the proofs in this matter. What I mean by that, we don't have to come in and take testimony again in the future. We just need to get the paperwork ready, done, signed. And once that happens, and we can get the matter concluded. You're not divorced until I actually sign that paperwork, though. Okay? Any questions, Ms. Brown? No, I don't have any questions. Okay, Mr. Brown? No, sir. Okay, we'll let you go then. <laughs>